For almost a decade, I wanted to get a heart rate monitor for going running, but I never liked the technology. Finally, this stuff got so well developed, like with GPS monitor, with heart rate monitor, with activity tracker, everything in one device, and it looks really, really, really great. So I finally bought one. Okay, let's do some Feldenkrais. Regardless of what the problem is with which a person comes to see me, usually they come because they have some pain, some neck pain or back pain is very common, shoulder pain, hip pain, chronic pain, tension, stress, whatever, whatever it is. But if they come to see me uh, like every week, for example, for a couple of weeks in a row, eventually all of them will get the same lesson, get to learn the same lesson. And uh, I show you what I what I'm showing them, what I want to teach them, and everybody has to get this down. The movement itself is fairly simple. It's just one thing, and you can do it with me. Just come on the floor, take a place either on the floor or a yoga mat. Shouldn't be too soft. Something where you can feel the floor. Just get on the floor, get yourself comfortable on the floor, and have one leg long and one leg standing. And take your time to come to the floor. You need to lie down and feel how you feel your pelvis resting on the floor, feel your shoulders, feel your head resting on the floor. You're really on the floor. Really take tension out of your body. Come to lie on the floor. The leg is long. You can feel your heel, your lower leg. It's a tight. The muscles, soleus, gastrocnemius, is on the floor. Upper leg might have no contact. You might have a little bridge here, no contact, but then your pelvis is resting on the floor. The other leg is standing. And I, I want you to bring your attention to this foot, to the foot that is standing, the, sta the, sta the standing foot. Feel, just feel the contact of the sole of your foot with the floor. Just as if you would use your hand to feel the floor, use the sole of your foot to feel the floor. Feel where your foot is standing, and I can give you some cues like feel your heel. Is the heel resting more on the outside or the inside edge of the foot? How much weight is on the heel compared to on your toes, on the front of your foot? Is the weight more in the inside of the front of your foot or the outer or the middle? Where is the line where you have the weight? Just get a feel for the, the relationship from the foot. <laughs> your foot, really, I, I'm serious. Your foot and the floor. And then, and then start, so this is the movement, this is the instructions for the movement. Start to put more weight onto the foot. Put more and more weight onto the foot. You can't see any movement now because there is not any movement yet. It's just one kilo or one pound more weight on the foot and then let go again. And do it again and let go again. And in, uh, every time you do this, put more and more weight onto the foot. 2 kilos, 3 kilos, you can't measure how many kilos it is, just put more and more, more and more and more. And at some point you will notice, the more you lean against the floor with your foot, you will notice that your pelvis rolls to the opposite side. Your pelvis starts to roll. And here's the problem, many people are so tense in the upper body that there is no rolling of the hip. Instead, the whole body is lifting. The more depressed, the, the more the body is lifting upwards. And that's not what we're looking for. Please relax. Just relax. Really relax down to the floor. Be on the floor. And then feel the left foot, and, uh, or the foot that is standing, if, regardless if you left or right. Just put more weight onto that foot until you can feel that your pelvis is rolling to the right. So your leg will roll. Huh? Your, your hip, one hip will lift, the other will roll. Keep your knee towards the ceiling. Uh, don't, don't tilt the knee over to any side. And then there's the connection. Once the pelvis rolls, 
the lower spine is not good in twisting. The lower spine will transfer this force, this power of rolling, it is a physical force, to your upper body. So your, your rib cage, your rib cage should be flexible enough to accommodate some, some twisting. Ah. Usually I would stand on the side with the leg long and help with the pelvis roll so people can really feel how the pelvis is rolling and you can differentiate the different parts, different vertebrae on your ribs so that this thing is really rolling, so that you're really rolling on the floor, lifting one hip, the other side really stays on the floor so this is some action in the hip going on, of course. This is a hip opener. It opens to the side. How, how is this abduction or a deduction? It's really some work inside the hip, hip joint. It's a beautiful little move. Beautiful. It's just it just feels so nice if you do it correctly. Just push yourself off the floor a little bit and let the rest of your body really relax. This is a start of many movement sequences. You can go in many different directions from there. You can go into a rollover to the side, you can go into a, a twisting movement, you can go into a side bending and, a, and an extension and a rotation, you can go, you can go into a bridge-like situation. Many things you can do from there, but this is the start. And try it with the other leg. And just enjoy this movement. That's the whole thing, right? It's just about enjoying yourself, knowing what you're do, doing when you do something. When you know what you do, you can do what you want. That's one quote from Moshe Feldman Kreis. Yeah, and it takes some time to get this right. And then it takes some time to improve it. And you just keep on improving this one movement. I've been playing with this movement for years now and it just keeps better, it just keeps feeling better. <laughs> so simple. So simple, isn't it? It's so simple.